and thank you very much to all of you for coming. Um, it's brilliant to see people here representing loads and loads, I think, of, of different individuals and different groups. And we might represent different groups, but ultimately we're actually all here for one reason, and that is to tell those people in that building there that no, we will not stand by quietly while you feed lies and distortion to a whole generation of our girls. Now, many of us have su suspected for some time that this government is sexist. When they first came to power, they forgot to appoint a minister for women. Do you remember? And then it was just a coincidence, we were told, that the public sector job cuts would affect women the hardest. We're all in this together, we were told, while closures to Shore Start centres left vulnerable mums sitting around in poverty high and dry. Well, now we see their true colours. This proposed legislation doesn't forget to stigmatise the sexual desires of young men. It doesn't quietly claim to be an accident that it hurts young women unintentionally. Well, we, out here, are all in this together. We are the 99% and we are the 52%. And we call you out for what you are. You are institutionally sexist. You are institutionally misogynist. And we will not stand for it anymore. We've already heard from this platform this morning that abstinence-only sex education doesn't work. It doesn't cut STD rates or teen pregnancy rates. In fact, the first thing you should know about abstinence-only sex education is that it doesn't lead to abstinence. And we've known this for centuries. Unwed mothers have been stigmatised. We've known this for centuries. Unwed mothers have been stigmatised and treated with unspeakable cruelty along with their children. Churches and religious groups have ordered abstinence from priests, monks, nuns and millions of adherents around the world. Still today, in parts of the world, adulteresses can be stoned to death, but somehow through it all, people are still having sex. To quote the famous song, I think they like it. <laughs> Legislation which flies in the face of these simple facts can only be born of stupidity, bigotry and hatred. Well, I say it's time to stop the hate and give our daughters the support and respect they deserve to grow into all of their incredible potential. The problem with abstinence-only sex education is not simply that it doesn't work, although it doesn't. The problem is that it ushers with it a raft of new issues. Young women are told that even one sexual encounter sullies them forever. No amount of academic or community work can restore your only important social asset, your virginity. There is a word for it. We call this slut-shaming, and it has no place in the legislature of our country in the 21st century, and nor, Nadine Dorries, do you. I wouldn't be the first person to accuse this government of short-sightedness. The consequences of wholesale cuts across health and education and the refusal to tackle the callousness of big banks and big business will be played out in years to come. But here's a little bit of forward thinking that seems to have been long since forgotten. Young people grow up into adults. And if you create a generation of ignorant young people, you create a generation of ignorant adults. Well, frankly, when I watch the debates on BBC Parliament, I think there's enough ignorance out there already. This government support for socially divisive faith schools has worried many of us. Parents in this country especially do not want teaching on issues like homosexuality, women's rights, birth control and abortion handed to religious leaders and left unchecked. This legislation would play right into the hands of the most extreme of those groups and offer them carte blanche to present lies and distortion to children as unrefutable fact. Well, I'm sorry, but here are the unrefutable facts, plain and simple. Abstinence-only sex education doesn't work, it has never worked, and it is not welcome here in our schools. Finally, let me put it this way. Understanding how their bodies work is a basic human right for young people. 
They need to be taught about sex in an honest way that encompasses not only the risks of disease or unwanted pregnancy, but also the potential for pleasure. I say out with abstinence-only sex education. Out, out, out with Nadine Dorries. In with quality, compulsory, honest sex education. Out with bad sex and in with good sex. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kate.